authorities respond to Wednesday traffic crashes, high waters force boardwalk closure, Sheboygan County Coast Guard rescues distressed boaters. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, June 18th, 2020. Both the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department and Sheboygan Police were busy dealing with crashes on Wednesday night. In the city, Sheboygan Police were called to head on a crash at 17th and Indiana. Police say 36-year-old woman was westbound on Indiana Avenue dropped a contact lens and went looking for it. While her eyes were off of the road, her car crossed the center line and hit an oncoming car head on. She was briefly hospitalized and cited for operating left of center. The other car was being driven by a 30-year-old Kohler woman and she and her 28-year-old passenger were both uninjured. Meanwhile, on the city's north side, the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department responded to a crash at the intersection of Highway 42 and County Road J around 9.30. Deputies say 18-year-old woman ran the stoplight and hit another vehicle. She and the driver of the car she hit were both hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. The 18-year-old was cited for failure to yield at the right-of-way and operating without a license. An unnamed skilled nursing facility in Sheboygan County is currently the subject of an investigation concerning cases of COVID-19. According to the daily report from the Sheboygan County Division of Health Services, although the active investigation subject remains anonymous, the daily report did say that the Sheboygan Senior Community completed testing of all residents and staff for the coronavirus and one positive test was found among the 115 tested. Throughout the county, three more coronavirus cases were confirmed and another 272 persons were told that they do not have the virus. One of the 47 cases currently active is hospitalized and besides the aforementioned skilled nursing facility, investigation, another ongoing inquiry is underway at the Sheboygan County Church, identified in the media accounts as Pentecostals of Sheboygan County in Sheboygan Falls. That congregation has cooperated with the Sheboygan County DHS actions and has ceased in-person activities in favor of the virtual services. Statewide, 9,406 tests came back negative since yesterday, while 256 or 2.6% of all tests were positive for COVID-19. Deaths now number at 712, resulting in a 3% rate of fatalities among the state residents confirmed with a case of COVID-19 and hospitalizations now number 3,128. City parks and splash pads are popular with thousands of kids and families in Sheboygan and just in time for summer. Those facilities are reopening according to the Parks Forestry Superintendent, Joe Curlin, he said, that's made possible by the county's transition to the second phase of the safe restart recommendations. But that does not mean that you can throw caution to the warm wind in this summer. Curlin did advise that those facilities are not cleaned or disinfected and use will be at your own risk. If you choose to visit playgrounds and splash pads, he said practice good hand hygiene by washing with soap and water or use a hand sanitizer. Federal and state guidelines still apply, so practice the now familiar six foot social distancing and limit gatherings to families or not more than two or 25 persons per group. U.S. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Andrew Wheeler was in Sheboygan on Tuesday to announce 
a new air quality attainment de designation for door and inland Sheboygan counties. Appearing at Sheboygan South Pier along with Congressman Glenn Groffman and Tom Tiffany, Wheeler and Wisconsin is definitely doing its part for the American environment and said the EPA would continue supporting Wisconsin communities' efforts to further improve the health and economic well-being of its citizens. Wheeler's announcement officially recognized that the Newport State Park area now meets the federal air quality standards for ground level ozone, which would loosen restrictions that impede businesses and industries hoping to locate or expand here. Congress, Cron Congressman Grothman applauded the EPA's decision calling pr previous interpretations of the Clean Air Act an error that saddled Lakeshore counties with responsibility of addressing polluted air that is generated elsewhere but transported here by the prevailing winds. Non-attainment had been guided by a single air quality sensor located on the shoreline, but a second inland sensor added a few years ago showed clean air was the rule away from the lake. Grothman's comments were echoed by County Administrator Adam Payne and Sheboygan Mayor Mike Vandersteen, who also created businesses with ex expending a great deal of time and money to reduce their own emissions. Impacts from the High Lake Michigan water levels have been evident along the shoreline and forms of disappearing beaches and bluff erosion. Now those impacts of extended beyond the shore has the city of Sheboygan has closed down a section of the river boardwalk from Parker Johns to Priority Sign. Superintendent of Facilities and Traffic Division Mike Williams says that is needed to avoid pedestrians slipping and falling on the slit and the mud left by the fluctuating lake levels. Sidewalks and parking lot structures opposite of those riverside buildings can be used to access those businesses until the city deems the boardwalk safe for all foot traffic. And finally, the Sheboygan County Coast Guard was called to rescue three people in a boat that started taking on water just off of two rivers on Tuesday afternoon. The Coast Guard station got a call around 6 p.m. and they were told that the boat was about two miles from the shore. A 45-foot response boat and helicopter responded and they were able to get the three people in the partially submerged boat to shore. The three on the boat were able to use their cell phones to call for help and had flare guns to help crews locate them. The capstone or capsized boat was towed to two rivers and no one was hurt and all three had life jackets on. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.